Brothers and sisters, this weekend we will be celebrating the First Holy Communion of the PrEP children who attend government schools. During the week, another group of PrEP children had their first confession. These children regularly come after school for religious education and preparation. The dedicated team of catechists have been for months forming and instructing these children so that they may be made aware of the great sacrifice the Lord Jesus made for them in his life and death. Jesus, the Son of God, became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and lived as a man so that we might have the fullness of life on earth. And he died that the gates of heaven may be opened to eternal life for us after our earthly life is over. As Jesus tells the Sadducees in today's gospel, God is God of the living, not of the dead. God desires for each one of us to be united with him in eternal life in heaven. But this eternal life with God doesn't come automatically or cheaply. It depends very much on the choices we make and on the life that we live while still on this earth. We can see the potential cost of eternal life with God in the first reading from the book of Maccabees. Here, brothers and sisters, we witnessed a mother in the second century before Christ, watching on as her seven faithful sons all went on to an untimely death in defence of their Jewish faith. Though the chance of a Christian dying for their faith is not as high as it was in the first centuries after Jesus' death, it is becoming more and more plausible in the West. Nevertheless, irrespective of whether we die a martyr's death for the Lord or not, we must still die to ourselves in order to attain heaven. We must respond to his grace to live a life in truth and in love. This is not easy, especially given our fallen nature and the fact that the world is generally walking in the opposite direction to Jesus. It is for this reason that when he was still walking the earth that the Lord Jesus established the church and instituted the seven sacraments by which the church would lead the people of God to sanctification and salvation. Through the sacraments, Jesus would continue to work in his church after his ascension into heaven. Brothers and sisters, Jesus wills both our sanctification and our salvation, so that we may be sanctified while living our earthly lives. Firstly, he gave us those sacraments of initiation, baptism, Eucharist and confirmation. Baptism and confirmation incorporate us into the body of Christ and give us the spirit to live a Christian life and to go out and proclaim his name. Through the Eucharist, we are given the necessary spiritual food for this earthly life, that we may battle temptations and strive to live good and holy lives, and of course, for the ultimate end, eternal life. The prep children will receive this second of the initiating sacraments this weekend. Some of them also had their first confession on Wednesday afternoon, which is another one of those sacraments instituted by Christ. Along with anointing of the sick, these are the two sacraments of healing, for healing our soul and healing our body. It is inevitable in the world that we live that we will be injured, either through sin or physical accidents and sickness. For these, Jesus gave us these two sacraments. The remaining two sacraments are of communion, either holy orders, which gives us deacons, priests and bishops, and matrimony or marriage for the lifelong bond between a man and a woman. As it turns out, it was over the issue of matrimony that the Lord Jesus was arguing with the Sadducees. The Sadducees were trying to catch Jesus out by referring to a woman who was married to seven brothers. One would die and then she married the next. They wanted to know if the resurrection from the dead was true, who of the seven brothers would she be married to in the next life? Jesus' response demonstrated the nature of all of the seven sacraments. They are only for this life, for in the next life there is no need of them, including matrimony. Interestingly, at the time of Jesus, the Pharisees believed in the resurrection of the dead, but the Sadducees didn't. So for this reason, they were trying to catch Jesus out. In response to their plots, Jesus, who is the fullness of divine revelation, declares once and for all the doctrine of of the resurrection of the dead. In his own rising, he is the firstborn of the dead 
and many more who had died in the millennia before him rose to new life with him. So brothers and sisters, why do we come to church every week to confess of our sins, to listen to the word of God and receive the Eucharist? Why did we baptise these children and then bring them to receive the Eucharist for the first time this weekend? Was it not so that we may be more and more conformed to Christ, living good and holy lives, so that then dying in his grace, no longer needing any of the seven sacraments, we may attain heaven? And then one day, at the end of time when Jesus returns in all his glory, we may rise from the dead, receive our glorified bodies anew, and be one with the Father, his Son Jesus, the Holy Spirit, Mary and all the angels and saints in perpetual joy for all of eternity.